Hey folks, Knox at IT Inspire here. I'm back and I'm ready to talk to you about something that's new and really exciting, and that is SQL databases hosted in Microsoft Azure. Azure is Microsoft's cloud platform where you can spin up virtual machines or go straight to them and have them host the applications themselves. Uh, which is kind of what's called platform as a service. And those types of cloud-based services are really gaining steam. Um, maybe you've also heard of Amazon's offering in AWS. Um, extremely capable and, and great cloud platform uh, AWS is. But Azure is the one that I'm focusing on today. And uh, today what I really want to do is I want to show you how to get a SQL database up and running. And I'm not talking about getting a virtual machine up and running and then installing SQL on top of that. I'm talking about using Azure to host the SQL database itself, such that in this case, uh, you won't be responsible for managing, um, you know, Windows updates or patching anymore. Uh, you're just managing the database itself. Um, you can also use Azure to set high availability levels and things like that. But uh, we kind of just want to dive right in and show you the basics. So I wanted to show you this is Microsoft Azure here. I'm uh, logged in on my dummy little lab account. Um, one of the cool things about Azure is that you actually get a $200 credit uh, for your first month so that you can get in here and play with things like this and see how they work for you and how they perform in your environment. Uh, and you can go from there and, and see uh, you know what you need to tweak and what, what you need to do. And there's a very little risk when you're learning how Azure works. Um, so one of the things that you would want to do right away is if you have an on-premise Active Directory, you would want to install what's called Azure AD Connect. Um, you would just download this and run this on any machine uh, that would have network connectivity to your domain controller. Uh, you could install it on a domain controller itself, but it makes sense to install this on its own VM if you have the licensing. Uh, and it's just a wizard. It's really, really straightforward. Um, it basically asks you what's going to be your, your on-premise account and what's going to be your your Azure account, uh, your Azure tenancy account. Basically, if you have Office 365, that's what you're signing in. Uh, and then you choose which OUs you want to sync users up to the cloud um, and syncs them up to the cloud. It creates the user if they're not already there, and it syncs their password. Um, so if you have Office 365 and you're not using Azure AD Connect, uh, it's a great opportunity to implement this and have all your users have one password that they use to log into your local machines as well as to, um, to, to their email. Uh, so yeah, I, I recommend doing that. Um, so when we implement Azure AD Connect, uh, it does show up actually under Azure, where to go, AD Connect or Azure Active Directory. Now all of those users exist up here in the Azure Active Directory. And when we spin up apps like SQL databases, uh, we can actually use those users uh, to authenticate in, into these SQL databases. So um, we're going to walk through this. Uh, and I say, you know, like, let's just roll up our sleeves and get started. Let's create a SQL server and SQL database. So. To get right up, to get diving right into it, I am going to click on SQL databases and we're going to add a new database. All right, pretty simple. What are we going to name this database? Uh, not the server, but the database itself. Let's just call this Storm SQL2. Um, I already have a Storm SQL on premise, uh, so I am going to um, go with Storm SQL2. Now, the subscription, once you've created your account, uh, it is going to ask you to create a subscription. Uh, you're going to type in your credit card info and everything, but you're not going to be billed for anything in Azure until you start using it. Um, you basically pay by the hour here. So uh, if you spin up a virtual machine and never turn that thing on, you're not going to get billed for it pretty much. Um, so that's, that's pretty neat. Um, the resource group, this is just a way to collectively group all of your resources together. Um, virtual machines, virtual networks, they all are tied to resource groups. Uh, I am reading Month of Lunches right now, the Azure and a Month of Lunches. Uh, so I have a group called a a Month of Lunches, and that's what I'm going to go with. Now, what database input do we want? What, what information, what data do we actually want to be in our database right off the bat? Uh, you can get a blank database. You can do the AdventureWorks sample database, or you could even restore from a backup if you have one. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go with the sample database so we have something to play with. Now, this server here is one that I've already created. 
Um, you, if you're doing this for the first time, you're not going to have this. You're going to have to do create a new server. And guess what? I'm going to do it too just to go along with you. We're going to create a new SQL server here. And I'm going to call this Storm SQL 2. We'll create. Ooh, I got to type my name right. Do a username. And we're going to do a password. This does require a 12 character password. So make sure it's good and secure. And the location. Um, you know, I would say, I would say go with East U.S. unless you've got to change it to something to be a little geographically different. Um, East U.S. is, from what I've seen so far, one of the cheapest places that you can go with, um, to, to get this. Because if I change it to Central U.S., then the pricing does change. Um, so let's go with East U.S., Okay, so that's going to have my new SQL server called Storm SQL 2, uh, and a database inside of it is going to be called Storm SQL 2. Now let's look at the pricing itself. Um, so, you know, this is going to depend on your, your workload here, what kind of workload you want to do. This is just a lab. This is just to show you how things are working. So if I go with a basic tier SQL database, um, it's going to give me a database size of 2 gigs and, you know, pretty much a, a standard not very aggressive uh, CPU RAM IO uh, balance here. Um, they call it uh, five DTUs. Um, a DTU is basically just a formula that they've put together that kind of balances uh, uh, compute RAM and IO. Uh, so for the astounding price of five bucks a month, this will give us a SQL database with uh, up to two gigs in database size. If I hit apply, we're going to look at what we've chosen here. We've got a database name. We've got our subscription. We're going to use uh, the already created resource group that I've already made. If you don't have one, you can just click create new uh, and just fill in the blank right there and it'll create it. We're just going to go back to this drop down here. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the sample database. We're going to create a new SQL server called Storm SQL 2. Uh, I'm not really worried about the elastic pool right now since this is just a basic sample database. And with that being said, we're going to pin the dashboard and click Create. And this will take a few minutes to create, so I'm going to pause it at this time, and we're going to wait for it to show up. Okay, a couple minutes has passed, and the deployment succeeded. All I did was click on Go To Resource here, and it automatically brings me to the page where I'm looking at this. Now, the SQL Server is not ready to go yet. Because what we have to do is we actually have to specify what IPs we will allow incoming traffic from. So this is this SQL Server is obviously living in the cloud, so we're going to be connecting over the internet to it. Uh, and it, by default, is it is not going to allow any connections at all. We have to set the firewall rules themselves. So to do that, I am just going to click on Set Server Firewall. And right off the bat, you can see it tells you this client IP address. This is the IP address you're coming from. And that's, you know, that's the one where I want to connect to it from. How about that? So I'm just going to click add client IP right here. If you didn't want to add this IP, if you wanted to specify IPs, you could just manually type in a rule name, a start IP address, and an end IP address. That would work just fine. So we're going to click add. And you can see it shows up right down here. Now I'm going to click save. And it will take just a second to update these firewall rules. And look at that, it's already done. Okay, so one thing I've noticed about Azure is even though it says it's succeeded and it's, it's ready to go, is uh, I have noticed that sometimes it takes an extra few minutes. Uh, so I'm going to pause it and let it just kind of do its own thing for a couple minutes before I attempt to connect. And we'll come right back to it. Okay, a couple minutes have passed, and I am ready to proceed. Let me show you where we can get the info to actually connect. All right, so I just closed out of that little screen where we were setting that firewall rule, and right here, I'm going to close this little menu, right here under server name, that is what we're going to connect to. And if you didn't want to use this URL, if you actually have global DNS somewhere, maybe through GoDaddy or something else, uh, you can just create a CNAME record that points to this, and that will work perfectly fine. All right, so on my local machine, I'm going to open up SQL Server Management Studio. And I'm going to paste in the URL here. 
And the user account that we created back on that page where we were specifying when we were creating the server, that is the account we're going to use, and I am going to connect. And look at that. We now have a cloud-based SQL server. If I expand databases, there's the database we created. And if I expand tables, it will take a second. And there we go. Look at that. We now have all of the records from the AdventureWorks database. How cool is that? Okay, now we wanted to take it a step further and use our Azure Active Directory accounts, right? Let's do that. Let's take this. Uh, the guides on how to do this I found were not not great. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to make this video for actually this, this specific purpose was to actually walk you guys through it. Um, okay, so let's go back to our dashboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on All Resources. And here you can kind of see all the resources I've created. Uh, the SQL server that we just created, not the SQL database, the SQL server itself is the one that we're going to want to edit. So Storm SQL 2 was the SQL server that I just created. So I'm going to click on that. And right here, Active Directory Admin. So since I've already got Azure Active Directory uh, set up and running, um, basically what this is going to do is we're going to pick an account in Azure Active Directory that SQL Server will use to authenticate other users. So when we're setting this, what we need to do is we need to specify an account that has global admin privileges to the Azure portal. Not a domain admin on local accounts, not the SQL admin, this is going to be the account that has access to view all of the users in Azure Active Directory because this is the account that at the Azure SQL database is going to use to figure out the rest of the users that we're going to add in a minute. This will make more sense in a second, but for right now, if you just have one account that is an Azure global admin, that's the one you want to pick. So I'm going to pick on my account here right here that I know is an, an Azure global admin. And... It shows that I've selected that account. I'm going to click Save. And it's setting, and it's done. So now I should be able to log into that SQL Server with this account. Let's bring up SSMS again. And this time, instead of using SQL Server authentication, I'm going to use Active Directory Password authentication. And I'm going to specify that account. And check it out. It lets me log in. OK. So now we're logged in with the Active Directory Administrator account. And what we want to do is we want to add regular Active Directory users to be able to log into the SQL database, right? That's the goal. So the way we do that is we do not, we do not create a login in master, which is what you would typically do uh, on an on-premise SQL server. What we're going to do is we're going to create the login directly on the database itself. These are contained users is what they're called. And we're going to do this using T-SQL, and that'll make more sense. We're going to do create user. And let's specify, I'm going to have an account I know is in my domain called Knox Server. And we're going to say from external provider. I'm going to do a semicolon to close it. All right, so that is going to create this user account as a contained user on the Storm SQL 2 database. I'm going to click Execute, and it worked like a charm. That's great. Now we need to give that user permissions. So I'm going to say Alter Role DB. You know what? I'm going to not do the brackets there. Just there. Let's do underscore owner, add member, and then this account that we just created. Let's do that. I'm going to highlight this and execute 
check it out. So now we've created this account for the Knox server. This is an Active Directory account on my local premise that is synced to Azure AD Connect. And I've added that user to the role DB owner so that they have, you know, the keys to the kingdom on this database. Uh, you know okay, so we've got the user created and the user added to the DB owner role on the database. One last thing I'm gonna do just for good measure. I know the documentation says not to do this, but in my experience, this has not caused any issues. In fact, it has fixed issues. I'm also going to create this user on the master account, although I'm not going to give it any, or excuse me, on the master database, although I'm not going to give it any permissions. It's just going to be a public user uh, on the master database. Um, so you're gonna copy and paste that there and then you're gonna create this user account, run it and create it on the master database. Um, when you do that, you should be able to expand the users and see that the user is there. Um, same thing down here, you should be able to expand and see if the user is there. Uh, the reason why we're doing all this in T-SQL, if you right click on this, you'll notice you, you can't get to the properties. You pretty much have to do it in T-SQL. And the other thing to keep to point out is you can only create Active Directory users if you're logged in with that Active Directory admin account that we specified on the SQL Server uh, after it was already created. Um, so uh, you do have to be logged in as this Active Directory account to execute the T-SQL commands to add other Active Directory users or Active Directory groups. Um, that will also work. Okay, uh, it is now time to test it out. Let's give it a shot. open SSMS back up just do a fresh new session here and instead of using that admin account we are going to use the server account and assuming I typed in the password correctly we are now logged in using an Azure Active Directory account let's expand tables just to make sure we see the resources and let's you know just do a quick query and bring that up and check it out just like that and under and under zero seconds uh, return 450 records to us from our cloud database how cool is that for five bucks a month um, you can spin up this very cool SQL Server database in Azure and integrate it to your, your Azure Active Directory environment. All right, guys, get out there and try it out.